Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for solving one-step equations, and how can inverse steps be used to solve those one-step equations? Today, you are going to need something to write with your Jaguar Jots 3.3 and 3.4 with that, how can I use inverse steps to solve one-step equations? You need that growth mindset with perseverance and determination, and a calculator might be handy. Let's get started. So we're going to start today's lesson with a definition of what it means to find a solution. A solution to an equation is the value for a variable that makes the equation true. So we're actually going to skip the bottom part of this page and we're going to go to the next page for today's lesson. We'll do this page in class. So today we're primarily going to focus on this idea of keeping equations balanced and using inverse operations. That is our strategy. So we're going to keep things balanced by doing the same thing to both sides. And to help us remember this idea of doing things, the same thing to both sides, we are going to use this strategy that I call putting in the road. Because we know that when we cross a road, we look both ways. And so this idea helps us with looking both ways and doing the same thing to both sides. So using the roads, you're, you'll hear me talk a lot about that always. Put in your road, put in your road. It also helps with organization because then our work stays nice and neat and going straight down. So what do we mean by inverse operations? Well, inverse operation undoes the operation that is already in the equation. So for example, this equation right here has addition. If I want to undo addition, I'm going to use subtraction because if I wanted to get back to zero and I was at nine, I would then subtract nine. So that's undoing, they're called additive inverses. So adding is the inverse of subtracting and subtracting is the inverse of adding. They go back and forth, they're inverses of each other. So this idea of getting back to zero, in this case, we don't really wanna go back to zero, we wanna go back to X or go back to our variables. So I had my variable and I added seven to it. And when I got done, I ended up at negative two. So we wanna get back to our X. So how do I undo adding seven? I undo it by subtracting seven because seven minus seven is zero. And I'm just going to put a single line. I'm not going to scratch it out, just a single line through it. And now I know I have X left on this side and negative two minus seven was a negative nine. So what this is saying was X started off being at negative nine. Now I need to check my work. So when I check my work, I'm going to write down what I think I got for my answer. I'm going to write down my original equation so that we know everything that we're checking. And then I'm going to write down my substitution. So I think X is supposed to be negative nine. So I'm gonna put it in parentheses and then write down everything else. And now I'm not going back and forth. I'm just working straight down. So negative nine plus seven is in fact negative two. This is true. Remember we said a solution makes the statement true, makes the equation true. So this works. I found the right thing. So now that I know I found the right thing, I'm gonna go ahead and box it in because I know my answer's correct. So now let's look at subtraction. So the question here is what was X when then I subtracted five, I ended up all the way at negative eight. So the opposite of subtraction is addition. So if I add five to this side, I also have to add five to this side so that it stays nice and balanced. So that would be zero and I'm left with X and negative eight plus five would be a negative three. So I think that's my answer, but now I have to check it. So go ahead and pause this as you go through the check and then come on back. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that. So X equals negative three. We put it into X minus five equals negative eight. Substitution, negative three minus five is a negative eight. That's true. So yes, this is my answer. And so this, these are the type of problems that you are going to be asked to do. So that's addition and that's subtraction. But what about the other operations we know how to do? And that's multiplication and division. So if you think about it, if I multiplied by five, five times four, and I got 20, if I wanted to go back to four, I would have to divide by five, right? So division is the inverse of multiplication. But we're going to put in our roads to help us keep our work nice and straight. And I'm gonna do some writing over here. This right here says negative three times X, right? So to undo it, times is going to be, become divide, and then it has to be the same thing as here. So divided by negative three. You cannot see that that's a negative three because there's print in the way. Divided by negative three. So whatever this number is here, 
it has to stay the exact same number here, including whether it's positive or negative. You're not going to change that. So if it was multiplying by negative three, it's going to be divided by negative three. So we are going to divide both sides here by negative three so that we get x equals a negative six. And then we're going to check it. So x equals negative six into negative three times x equals 18. So does negative three times negative six equal positive 18? Yes, it does. This is my answer. So when we did division, notice we're using a fraction bar to show division. The fraction bar doesn't go all the way across through the road. It stays on each side because it is an operation and we're not using the dot slash dot. We're using the fraction bar. Okay, let's look at this one. What is happening to X here? This here says X divided by negative two. So the inverse is going to become the opposite of divided is multiplied by and then we have to do the same thing, the same number, multiply by negative two. It has to be the same number. We can't do a different number because we are trying to get rid of that number. It's not gonna change to a two, it has to stay negative two. We're gonna use parentheses, not dots. We're always going to use parentheses to show multiplication in these kinds of problems. So parentheses on both sides. It's up there because it's like negative two over one, but it's right in line over here. So negative two divided by negative two, that's one. So this side is X and seven times negative two is a negative 14. So my answer is, I think X equals four, negative 14, but I need to check it. That's what I think is my answer. That is my original problem. And now I substitute. Negative 14 divided by negative two is seven. Seven equals seven, that's true. I did my work just fine. So what we're doing here is we're undoing what we had with the inverse operation. The tricky part always comes down to how do I show my work in a way that makes sense. And this is how mathematicians have decided we are going to show our work so that the math makes sense to everybody reading it. Okay, today we're actually going to look at the summary together. Using blank operations is a strategy that keeps an equation in blank and works to isolate the variable so that the solution is revealed. You should always blank your solution by plugging it into the original equation. I actually think you guys can do this on your own. So I'd like you to pause it and I'd like you to think about what should go into those three blanks and then come on back and see how you did. So check your work. How did you do? Using inverse operations is a strategy that keeps an equation in balance and works to isolate the variable so that a solution is revealed. You should always check your solution by plugging it into the original equation. So I would really like you to write down the two main ideas about subtraction is the inverse of addition and division is the inverse of multiplication. And how I'd like you to write it down is like this. Go ahead and write that right there down two more times, just down here at the bottom so that you can start remembering it and memorizing it. Thank you so much for joining us in this lesson about solving one step equations. And remember, be nice to each other because we can always use some extra kindness in our lives. And I will see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.